All right, hey everyone, Wanderbots here, and welcome to Nelson Tether's Puzzle Agent. As a break from breaking my brain over Riven, I wanted to play something short and something charming and something kind of Christmassy, and this one was top of the list. This is actually one of those games that I played right before I started my YouTube channel, and I think I even considered recording a series on it at the time, but I didn't for some reason. Um, and I absolutely adored the game, but it just... It was too fresh in my mind early on uh, for me to want to come back and do a series on it, and then I just got too busy with so many other games. But, in kind of an attempt to play a whole bunch of really short games this winter, I figured this would be a perfect one to dive into. It's a two-part series uh, with a fairly good ending. I don't know, I, I love this game. It's like uh, Professor Layton, but so much dumber. And I remember you playing this, but I don't recall much about it. So we'll have to see. Oh, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI? Puzzle investigation. It's a little loud. One second. I'm just gonna... Hopefully... Oh, nope. It's still going. It's still playing. There we go. Why is it so oh god damn it. Uh, just let it go. Crossword it's puzzles. So loud. Is that the bubble gum that used to come in those wrappers? Oh yep. yeah. Bet it is. When I was a kid, I took a creative writing class at UC San Diego, I think it was. Mm. And... They had a lot of those? Yeah, they had like a little convenience slash candy store, and they had those for five cents a piece. Wait, those are footsteps? <gasps> Is he going to solve the puzzle for him? Or write a message? Oh, let me guess. The first puzzle will be him putting his crossword back together. The world's largest Jenga. Nelson, Nelson Tethers. Uh, yeah, you uh, can read sorry. this. No, no, you read it. My voice is dying anyway. Cracked crossword. Assignment. Nelson Tethers crossword puzzle has been ripped to bits. But is there something written on it? Reconstruct it to find out. So, like I said, kind of a dumb alternate version of... Uh, Professor Layton, if you... Oh, Okay. If you are familiar with that series. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to do like a proper series on some of the Professor Layton games. But I just have never I've never really had the time. Even though I know they're actually quite charming. Oh, well, you found the edge. Yep. That helps. Nice part is it kind of just stitches itself together without my immediate input. That bit goes up there, and that one goes down. School. Scoggins. Scoggins. What? Oh, I see. Taxpayer dollars spent. Seventy-five thousand dollars spent on this puzzle. What? Yeah. What? Cracked co crossword. Well, didn't use hints. No wrong answers. Good job. You're a top agent. Uh, puzzle research. This is Agent Tethers. I, I think you have the wrong number. Oh, I see. A an assignment. In the field? No, no, sir. It's, it's just, it's been... Yes, quite some time. Uh-huh. Erasers? The foundation of democracy? Oh, absolutely, sir. I agree, sir. 
Oh, yes, the White House needs its erasers, sir. I'll be on the next plane to... Wait, where? Oh. Wait, does Scoggins have an eraser factory? I don't think so. It would make sense in the context I mean, of... normally, yes, but in real life, I think I looked this up. I don't know. Ah. Uh. I don't think Scoggins is actually a real thing. Yeah, it's not actually a real place. I, I meant in... In game. In game, yes. The the thing is, like, I would not be surprised if Scoggins, Minnesota was a real thing, though. Just arrived in Scoggins, Minnesota. Population, 754. Temperature, hmm. It's cold and not much to look at. According to the agency, there's some kind of situ... In thing going on at the local eraser factory. The whole plant is shut down. There's a weird man staring at me. Hopefully this won't be a big waste of time. <clears throat> Agent Tether's out. I love this game. I have no idea where my hotel is. I might have to ask for directions. This reminds me of uh, when I was watching Twin Peaks, because the main character is an FBI agent and oh, also yeah. uses the tape recorder. There, there are a number of very clear influences, and I'm pretty sure Twin Peaks is a big one. Excuse me, I'm Nelson Tethers with the FBI's Department of Puzzle Research. Hello? Yep. Okay, and you are? Bjorn. Bjorn? Yeah. Nice to meet you, Mr. Bjorn. Boy, those snowmobiles sure are a bumpy ride, eh? Yeah. Can you give me directions to the nearest hotel? I'm having a little trouble finding my way around. You'd never get there. Roads are too slick. Sir, I'm an agent of the FBI's Puzzle Research Division. It can't be harder than the puzzles I see every day. Not so. It's really just a, a matter of trajection. Okay, on the way to the hotel, you're going to pass two traffic lights. Assignment. Directions and detours. Nelson's snowmobile is sliding along the roads. Arrange the logs to help Nelson bump his way to the hotel. Make sure to pass the traffic lights. Bjorn mentioned along the way. What? Re what? Wait, yep. what is... This is... It's a Is trajectory it... puzzle. We suck at driving and are sliding all over the place. Wait a minute. So this isn't even a puzzle. It's a... I mean, it is a puzzle. It's just... Okay, so that log is going to send him that way. He has to avoid the traffic lights. Is that what it is? Or he has to go through the traffic lights. Yeah, he's got to pass through them. I these mean, these are fine. not missed levels of... Alright. Or should you expect them to be? More taxpayer dollars spent. I think it's generally about $75,000 per puzzle. We're an expensive man. <laughs> like, in reality, Nelson absolutely just lives the ultra-high life because he's convinced the U.S. government that he's important. And they pay him $75,000 per puzzle. Well, okay, no, they probably have a lot of other, like, red tape. Maybe he gets paid a quarter of that, but... What? Um, I must have gotten lost. I thought your directions were taking me to the hotel. They did. Uh... This is the hotel? I'm standing in front of the hotel, aren't I? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Welcome. I'm here to investigate an incident at the Scoggins Eraser Factory. Do you know anything about it? No. No. 
hotel's going to close soon. Better check in if you're sticking around. Seen any suspicious people hanging around the hotel lately? Yep. Really? Can you describe them? Skinny. Asks lots of questions. Wears a stupid hat. Thanks for the tip. Yep. I... Hmm. Let's... Let's forgo <laughs> speaking with this man anymore. Yep. Wait, why the fence with the claw marks on it? Discovered a fence. Boards all chewed up something terrible. Could be the work of strays trying to get to the dumpsters back there. I don't know why I'm reporting this. Oh, <laughs> all the gnomes. Okay, that person's suspicious. Well, these are interesting. Yeah, those are Scoggins gnomes. All the tourists love them. But I think one has gone missing. I swear, I had six of them. I took a picture when I set it up, but I guess I lost it. I still have the film negative, though. <laughs> negative gnomes? Yep. Assignment. A ceramic gnome has disappeared from the hotel display. But which gnome? Identify the gnome in Martha's photo... Negative. That doesn't appear on the display. Oh, so it the colors are the opposite, aren't they? Yeah. So this guy goes to that. Yes. Oh, um, it's one of the green-hatted gnomes, which means it's one of the red-hatted gnomes here. Ah, yeah, because there's only two Both there. Both of the green hats have their hands up. No, all of them do here. Um. Wait, but that okay, one. Okay, it's one. one of these two. I think the one on the left. This one. If you look at the two green-hatted gnomes, none of them are facing left. You're right. With their body, I should say. I guess I didn't take that into account as a relevant thing. So you think that one? Well, yeah, let's just look it over. No, no, no. This guy is. Oh, but you're that, right. That guy is you're right. that one. No, he's just facing in, in terms of his hand. They've been mirrored. Yeah. Sorry. I just keep thinking, yeah, but you can flip that one. Like, that wouldn't, that wouldn't actually be very hard. Mm-hmm. Wait, rejected? What? No. What? Wait, 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 wait. I thought the negative... You said it had to be a red hat Shell, one. it's this one. That one? Yeah, because it's backwards. Film? Oh, it's backwards. Wait, why does she have it flipped that way? Just because? If you had told me that, I wouldn't... I didn't notice. Until it got rejected, and it's like, oh, that's why. Well, ah. one of the gnomes has most definitely run off. Oh my, wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Does this hurt our overall score? Nah. Or who cares? Huh? What do you mean? Oh, ew! Is that gum? Oh right, I can ping. To see the things I can interact with. Hello. Well, hello there, mister. Welcome to Valda's Inn. I'm Martha Garrett, but everyone calls me Ma. How can I help you? I'm Nelson Tethers. I have a reservation. Oh, yeah. You're here about the Eraser Factory, eh? We're awfully excited to have a real FBI man in our town. It's just like TV, yeah? Ooh, I'm gonna make some hot dish for you later. A uh, hot dish? Oh, you'll love it. I've never met a man who didn't love himself some hot dish. So, uh, what room am I in? Yeah, okay. I've got your room right here. Oh, dear. This is so embarrassing. The night clerk wrote down your room number in code. Hmm. Mind if I have a look? I bet I can figure out what room I'm in. I like how this is going to cost the... Uh... The FBI. Cost America money. 
<laughs> room key confusion. The security-minded night clerk notated Nelson's room number in cryptic form. Help Martha see what's written so that you can get your keys. So they're Canadian? No. It's Minnesota. Yeah. So. Yeah, this is Minnesota. It just says nine, it's doesn't my it? People. Is that code? Yeah, it's just they scribbled the exterior, right? Okay. As a Minnesotan, this is very Minnesotan. Yup. Can confirm as a Minnesotan. There you go, Mrs. I gotta Barrett. get Rita to play this. Yeah, now I see. Okay then, here's your room key, FBI man. Thanks. Actually, while I have you here, do you mind if I ask you a couple questions? Real quick, I promise. Oh yeah, of course. How do I get to the factory from here? The FBI doesn't know where the factory is? Oh dear, our moose is cooked. Rest assured, ma'am, the FBI just likes to confirm intelligence with civilian knowledge of... We like to double check things. Oh, of course. Well, it's easy. I have a tourist map of our little town of Scoggins right here. You know, our Scoggins erasers is the plant that supplies the White House with all of its erasers. The president could be fixing a mistake with a Scoggins eraser right now. Yes, ma'am. That's why I'm here. That and the fact that every time the Bureau made an inquiry into the situation, all we ever got back were bizarre puzzles. Oh yeah, well, that'll happen. <laughs> Do you know anything about the problem at the factory? Yeah, so tragic about the accident, huh? Accident? Oh yeah, the foreman, Isaac Davner, they say he was killed in there. Is that so? Well, not to be gossipy, but I heard the accident was caused by raccoons. Raccoons? Yeah, little creatures that live in the woods around the factory. Maybe you should go talk to Sheriff Bog about it, though. You should be able to catch him out by the factory right now. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Wait, I Puzzle. thought we were in Minnesota. Why is she talking like a stereotypical Canadian? No, no. This is a very Minnesotan accent. They're super similar, well, though. Well, so the thing is, half of Wander's family is Swedish, and that's where this accent derives from. Yep. But. Yeah, would you believe I had I sounded like this when I was a kid? And he still says things like "roof." Yep. And "vog." Yep. And "root." Yep. And what else? You what know? else? Well, huh? Sorry, I'm trying to sound like Bjorn outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. The guy in the lobby, is he okay? Oh, that's Bo Murphy. He's always been a bit of an odd one. Yeah, he sits there all day trying to do his puzzles. He mostly keeps to himself, and I bring him some food from time to time. Sometimes I swear he'd starve to death if I didn't bring him something to eat. Thanks. Well, goodbye. Enjoy your stay. Oh, that reminds me. Do you have any gum for sale? Or know where I can buy some? Dear, we've been out of gum for quite some time. What? Haven't seen a stick in months anywhere in town. We tend to get shipments of things like that in the spring. So, no gum? No. Oh, no, gum no gum. Gum helps me concentrate. No, not that gum. Don't. Don't you dare. That thing is used. It's been in someone else's mouth. No. Gum found. Nelson Tethers thinks best when he's chewing gum. Any kind of gum. Find discarded gum and use it to get a hint during a sticky puzzle. Oh, no. Here's the thing, though. He came prepared with a bunch of already been chewed gum. We started with eight. Ew. Like seven or eight. Like, this this guy carries it with him. Excuse me, you look perplexed. Puzzles. So many puzzles. Puzzles? I might be able to help you with that. Tapeworm Twister. Bo has swallowed a rubber band again. His x-ray shows only tapeworms, or 
does it. Rotate segments of the pesky parasites to reveal the hidden object. I regret. Wait, tapeworms? Why? Okay, I don't know quite about the anatomy of the tapeworms, but they should definitely have only one head. So that one down there is, it, it's unfeasible on the left. That one lines up better. I think that's it. No, 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 look down. That that one has two heads. You cannot have a two-headed tapeworm. This one? On the bottom left, you have a two-headed tapeworm. Oh. So I think that has to go there, but these have to move. Yeah, that has to move around though. I think where you had the head was fine. This one? Like twist it around. But then you have to change the tail at the bottom. Like there's an especially long tapeworm. Oh. See. I think you had it before. If you, can you switch back what you just twisted? This? Well, now you have to twist that one up there. So, Shell, I think it has to be a loop. I don't think... Oh, wait. Hold up. So that works. This that looks one. better, though. That one works. So, can you flip that worm around? Oh, uh, Sorry, I just wanted to see if there's anything else. This one? No, 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 down at the bottom. This that, one. That's that's obviously no, no, um, no, the left, left this one. one. Yeah, that has to be moved because it's not connecting to anything. Okay, so let's follow all the worm bits. That shell. I would be honest with you. you this is it. You can't have a two-headed worm. I don't think it matters. See, all we had to do was make a rubber band, which I have successfully done. But can you make a rubber band without having a two-headed tapeworm? I think so. I, I think this isn't right. How? You it can't, didn't care about the tapeworms. It cared about the rubber band. You can't have a two-headed tapeworm. Solved. Now maybe you can relax a little. Plenty of uh, whispers. If it's an acrostical enigma, maybe it's a, a Baltimore trans deletion. Uh, the whispers? Or not. I still Got think any that more was puzzles bogus. you need help with? Puzzles. No new puzzles yet. Brain's always thinking, thinking about puzzles. I'll just check in on you later. Ooh, screwdriver. Someone left a screwdriver in the alley beside the hotel. Looks clean. Probably of no consequence. Ew. There's, well, there's more gum. Ugh. Hmm. Winner undeclared in local contest. Arm wrestling redux. The Annabelle Grill Ladies Arm Wrestling Tournament is over. And the judge missed it. Read the four statements and help him determine the winner. Outmatched by the grisly grip. I pinned a pearl like a new hat. Those grisly grip couldn't whip me. Part one fair and square. So that lady lost. Flo's grizzly grip couldn't beat me. Oh wait, so do we have to determine who got first, second, third, and fourth place, or do we have to no, just determine who No, we just have to figure won? out who won. Well, definitely not that lady. Yeah, she lost. She lost. Um, so probably not the blue-shirted lady because she was saying, you know, Pat won fair and square. I pinned Pearl like a new hat, and Flo's grizzly grip couldn't whip me. So it's one of the two lower ladies that won because they both proclaimed that 
they they that they had prevailed in Correct. some way. But now I suppose we need to figure out who is Flo, because Flo is the one with the grizzly grip. And who is Pearl? Well Well, wait a minute. But Flo's grizzly grip couldn't beat me. Right, so Flo beat the lady with the bandana, but couldn't beat the red-headed girl. So we have Flo, Pat, Pearl, and Loser Unnamed. Lady. Or, unless, she's Pat, she's probably Flo. Why is the lower right lady wearing ice skates? I was wondering about that. <laughs> yeah, so... So she lost. She lost. She won at least one, and she won the grizzly grip. She beat Flo. Yeah, so she beat Flo. That other lady beat Pearl... So, so, my question is, how did they eliminate people in this competition? Was it just two versus two, and then the other last two versus two? Probably. Okay, so that would mean that the redheaded girl was definitely in the finals. Mm -hmm. See, my bet is, this is Flo. She beat her. She beat her... This is probably Pat. Mm hmm. This is Flo. This is Pat. Pat won fair and square, beat her. She pinned Pearl. Uh, pinned Pearl like a, a new hat. So. Well, uh, well no, no, she no, lost but to her. she was she outmatched by her. the Gridley. No, and then she, she won. She was outmatched by the Grizzly Grip. She was outmatched by the Grizzly Grip, which had to be either this lady or this lady. It had to be Flo's. Yeah. And I'm assuming this is Flo because there's no way that she would be the Grizzly Grip. So Pat won fair and square. She, so she you're thinking that the win. redhead is Pat. She won no matter what. She won no matter... Well, she won a match. She won a match. We don't know if this woman won a match or not, but there are no statements saying that she did, so I'm just going to assume that she didn't. But whoever won with the Grizzly Grip then lost with the Grizzly Correct. Grip. Correct. And so means... assuming a standard tournament bracket, the original matchup was these two against each other, these two against each other, and then these two against each other, with her coming out on top. No, the Grizzly Grip had to have defeated the Bandana Lady. Yes. Oh, so but Flo's grizzly grip couldn't whip me. So yeah, that would be Flo with the black hair. Correct. That's Flo. Flo. Okay. This is Pat. All right. If you want to say Pat one, if that is indeed Pat. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it looks like she would have won a tournament. I think part of it is these are not actually that complicated. That was a tricky one. Oh, right. You can even go back and double check. Oh, every time I perfectly solve a puzzle, we get gum. Mm hmm. Someone left a. S looks. Nope. Wait, but we can't use the screwdriver? Guess not. Oh, well. The residents of Skagen seem nice enough. Aside from one wild goose chase, everyone's been cooperative. Plus, it looks like I'm primed for all the hot dish I can eat. It remains to be seen if that's a good thing. I got a map from the hotel owner, so I'm heading over to the eraser factory. Agent Tether is out. Am I supposed to be saying that? Yeah, there's a help wanted door, but... If I ping, we can see that there's nothing else to do. Mm-hmm. Moose Ear Diner, the ice fishing? Huh. There's a lot about the town. 
Well, there's the sheriff. Hi, Sheriff Bog. Yeah, I'm uh, Nelson Tethers of the FBI's Department of Puzzle. Agent Tethers, good to meet you. We got a real mess here. Yes, we do. We do? Oh, yes. It's going to be a while before we can get this factory running again. But my job is to get this factory back to making erasers. Agent Tethers, you're in a right pickle. Well, I should probably ask you some questions about the incident then. That's what I'd do if I was a big, important FBI boy. <laughs> what was this incident? Well, we don't need to be dramatic. What happened? There was an explosion. What? Oh, yeah. A big explosion. And the foreman just never came home. When did the accident take place? Well, I've been trying to figure that out myself. Here's what I know. Wrangling Watchmen. The Rest Easy Guard Service was employed to keep watch over the factory from midnight to midnight yesterday. Wait, midnight to midnight? So mm -hmm. I suppose just all day. Yeah, 24 hour period. From their statements, can you determine the time of the big noise? So there's Bernie, Pop, Al, and Iggy. Boom, one hour before the last year started. I get the shortest shift. Three hours. Only Bernie put in the full eight hours. Worked from six till I was relieved. Okay, so that guy started at six. <laughs> um, Bernie put in eight hours. But that guy heard the explosion one hour before the last shift started. So Bernie was third. Right? Yeah. Which means Icky would have had to have been... Oh, gosh. So if we're talking about midnight to midnight, that would be 24 hours as opposed to just, yeah, the 12. So Bernie works eight. So somebody worked for six hours from 12 to six, probably. I'm assuming that's Al. Yeah, and Pop only got three hours, which was the shortest shift. Okay. I'm just gonna... Now, the interesting thing is, if Bernie says boom one hour before the last shift started, it means that with Pop saying that I get the shortest shift, which is three hours... That would mean that you could... Time for a puzzle agent page. That me, Yeah. It means that the... If Pop was, say, the last shift, he would be working from... Nine until, nine until midnight. midnight. But that's only if he was the last shift. Because Bernie, if he was working... If he's working the second to last shift, and, say, Pop was the last shift... And that means that the explosion could have happened at 8 p.m. One hour before the last shift started. Mm. So 8 p.m. is a contender, but we don't know if that's true. You know that Iggy couldn't have worked from 6 p.m. till 8 in that instance because that's just impossible. And Bernie worked eight hours. So yeah, so no matter what, it happened during Bernie's shift. Yeah, Bernie... Let's go uh, say that Bernie... Seven hours into Bernie's shift. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Bernie could have been working from 1 p.m. Only so, Bernie put in the full eight hours. So Al could have worked from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So Al, Al worked from midnight... Uh, from midnight until 6 a.m. Iggy worked from 6 a.m. until 1 p.m. Bernie worked... Yeah. Eight eight tracks. You're saying that 8 is... 8 p.m. is probably the time? Probably. Because there's no way you could fit... Pop in before Iggy... And Al. Because... If he only works for three hours... 
then he would have to do either from midnight to three or three till six, which would mean Al only also works for three hours, which doesn't make enough sense. We don't have to- because he needs to have the shorter shift. Pop needs to have the shortest. Correct. Well, I guess this note page is meaningless. Oh. Oh, you need to make it actually made it eight o'clock, right there. All right. Is it correct? Yes, indeed. Love how only Bernie looks at all disturbed. Well, the rest weren't there for it. Yep, they didn't if hear the explosion. If there was an explosion at that time, wouldn't the icicles on the building have been knocked off? Hmm, good point. Maybe they grew back. <laughs> what happened to the foreman? My notes don't have a lot of details. Well, we're still trying to figure that out. One day after work, Mr. Dabner just never came home. The accident was pretty bad. Oh, is there, uh, is there a body? Nope, he's just gone. Isaac Dabner's his name, if you don't have that in your notes. We don't even know if he died in that explosion? Won't be able to find that out till we find a way into the factory. What did your investigation turn up? Not much. I can't figure out how to get past this lock. Well, that's because it's missing a piece. I can see that just by looking at it. So it is. I guess that's why you make the big bucks, right? That's right, sir. Well, I don't seem to be getting a lot of answers. Listen, why don't you meet me down at the Moose Ear Diner later? I have some files related to the case that you may be able to help me with. Oh, okay, but I really think... Agent Tethers, it's a pleasure working with you. You're doing a great job. I'll meet you at the Moose here in a bit. Hmm. Is that a light switch? Hmm. Interesting. Out at the eraser factory. The doors to the factory are very locked. Some sort of custom-built contraption has got this place locked up tighter than Fort Knox. The device seems damaged, though. It seems to be missing a piece. It has a light switch, but I can't do anything with it. Mm-hmm. I suppose you'll have to find a gear. But for now, this is a pretty good stopping point, at least for us. I love this game. It's one of the few games that I will gladly just play again and probably again in a couple of years again, and it'll feel fresh and new. I don't know. There's just something weird and quirky about this. And also, it's kind of fun to have uh, <laughs> effectively uh, my hometown parodied uh, in some way, shape, or form by a video game. But with all that, before we start talking to people, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.